We were cleaning up our storage racks the other day and noticed that we had an outdoor router. So that got us thinking. What does that even mean? Do they have greater range compared to indoor ones? Is there even any difference? Let's investigate. So the router we found was an ingenious ENS620EXT outdoor wireless access point. Rolls off the tongue. It offers speeds of up to 867 megabits per second on the 5 gigahertz channel and 400 megabits per second on the 2.4 gigahertz channel. It has full support for MooMimo and beamforming using 2x2 spatial streams. All in all, it's a pretty well-rounded feature set, but nothing that you couldn't find in a regular indoor router. There are, however, a few differences here and there that you don't normally see. The first is the enclosure itself. It is an IP55 rated weatherproof housing to protect against moisture and dust. It's not completely waterproof, but according to code, it will withstand water being projected at it by a nozzle from any direction. So you know what that means, super soaker fights. It's meant for it. The second feature is compatibility for the Wireless Distribution System Standard, or WDS. You can think of this like a mesh wireless network, except with one difference. In a mesh network, if one access point goes down, then the rest of the network can reorder itself and repair the chain. A WDS system is sequential, so if one access point goes down, then everyone behind it will go offline as well. We kept digging around, and eventually we found an equivalent indoor router to compare this to. We wanted to match the brands to keep it as similar as possible, so we grabbed an ingenious EAP1750 indoor wireless access point. This router is rated at AC1750, but that's okay since this is a relative comparison. We're primarily interested in testing wireless internet range, and we shouldn't be bottlenecked since our internet's just 125 megabits per second. Now, in theory, an outdoor router should be more powerful than an indoor one, right? After all, an outdoor router doesn't have the liberty of bouncing its signals off of walls. For our testing, we're using a North American Samsung Galaxy S8 with the Snapdragon processor. It's got full support for 802.11ac with a 2x2 dual stream and Mumimo technology, so it should be a good match for our routers. For baseline, we ran a speed test on our wired systems and got a maximum download speed of 121 megabits per second and an upload of 14.44 megabits per second, which will be our target to hit. For our first test, we set up both routers in the middle of our studio and did an indoor test from 5 feet away and 20 feet away. From 5 feet away, both routers performed as expected. The indoor router measured 89 down, the outdoor router 96 down, and both had an upload of 14. Moving further away to approximately 20 feet, the gap between the two routers narrowed down to 74 and 79 megabits per second respectively, while offering the same upload speed. For our next test, we moved both routers to the outer wall of our warehouse. From 5 feet in front, we immediately got some drastically different results. Our indoor router dropped to 39 megabits per second down and stayed at 14 megabits per second up, while our outdoor router sat at 67 megabits per second down but dropped to 13 megabits per second up. Next, we walked forward 25 feet while maintaining line of sight. The outdoor router performed pretty well, sitting at 18 megabits per second down and 14 megabits per second up. The indoor router, however, was essentially useless, with a download speed of 0.74 megabits per second and an upload of 0.69. Uh, it struggled to even maintain the connection to finish the test. At this point, we were curious just how well the outdoor router works outdoors. So we went to 75 feet away and did the test again, and the router dropped down to 11 down and 9 up. We went another 25 feet, and at a total distance of 100 feet away, our download managed to jump back up to 15 megabits per second, while our upload dropped all the way to 3. Now, at this point, we noticed something interesting. We were only able to maintain the connection with a direct line of sight to the router. As soon as anything got in the way, like a tree or a car, our signal would degrade enough that we wouldn't complete the speed test. Phone stayed connected, but it was in that weird limbo mode where it wouldn't do anything because the Wi-Fi signal was too weak and it hadn't switched over to LTE yet. Now we ran one final test with the routers at the back of the building while we were standing at the front of the building. Unsurprisingly, the indoor router wasn't even detected. What did surprise us was that the outdoor router, at more than 50 feet away, through a concrete and metal warehouse, we were able to pick up our Wi-Fi signal, and it gave us a speed of 6 down and 6 up, enough to actually be usable. So wait, what does all this mean? 
Well, in our testing, the outdoor router did perform better than the indoor router. Does that mean that all outdoor routers are better than indoor ones? No, definitely not. We also have to remember that we tested this in our warehouse studio, which is essentially one giant room. In a regular household, an indoor router may be better at penetrating walls and bouncing the signal off and stuff. We know some high-end routers from companies like TP-Link, Asus, Linksys, or D-Link could probably broadcast a steady signal outdoors, but the ones powerful enough would likely cost much more than our $150 Ingenious model here. Now for these tests, we set everything up on the 2.4 gigahertz frequency because it offers slightly better range and its lower frequencies are better at penetrating solid objects. We did some early testing with the routers indoors on the 5 gigahertz network, but our download speeds dropped by over 90% as soon as we walked outside and closed the door behind us. As always, the best router is the one that fits your needs. The outdoor router may have given us better range and speed outdoors, but it doesn't offer any wired ethernet connections for other devices or USB ports for hosting a file server. In conclusion, it's pretty simple. Use an indoor router at 5 gigahertz for indoor use and an outdoor router at 2.4 gigahertz for outdoor use. If you're interested in getting more info on these routers or any other routers or any other electronics for networking or PCs or what have you, you can click the eye in the corner to go to ncix.com and check them out. And that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. You can click here for previous videos. You can check us out on Twitter over here. Those are our handles. But as always, like the video if you liked it, comment below for fans with benefits, and subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX. And until next time, also this looks like it would be like a ninja weapon. I didn't know I didn't mention that throughout the video, but it's totally true. Is it not? Whoosh, 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 whoosh.